Hey everybody. So I had a quick question about uh, keyframing the color of our little dude, and uh, I wanted to show you two different things about that. Um, keyframing the color is pretty simple. So uh, in this case, I just put um, just the slightest little eye shift, and then he spins, and then he turns back around. Okay. So what I was thinking was we'd look either way. Then at this point he would turn. He'd be still green, and when he turned back around, he would be red. Something like that. Okay, so let's just say we were going to wait till where he was about to turn. So at 24, he starts his turn. So at 24, I still want him to be green. So first things first, let's turn off the reference so I can actually select the mesh. Make sure I'm in object mode. And then let's go to the material attributes. Alrighty, down at the very end, we have Lambert and we have the color green. This is actually pretty simple. So at 24, I still want him to be green. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on the word color and set a key. All right. Then what I'm going to want to do is he's going to spin, he's going to spin, he's going to spin. And let's say here at 40, he's going to turn kind of red, maybe a little bit darker red, something like that. As if he was kind of spooky and going to turn red, then basically land and be like that. So I keyframed that as well, okay? So we go back to the beginning, look, looks, and then he turns red. That's pretty straightforward, okay? But suppose that I wanted the color to change on a single frame, not kind of over time, because if you look at this, it's sort of starting to grow over time, going from green to red, which may may not be what you want. Um, your normal inclination would be to collect to select the character and then look for the color um, keys down here so you could change them. Well, you would probably notice that there are no keys apparently set. And you might be like, well, that's not very helpful. Well, there are keys set, but the only odd thing about it is the keys are actually set on the color, not on the object, which is really strange, but in Maya, that's how it's done. So you'll notice if I select the character, there are no color keys, okay? The movement keys are actually on his controller. But if I select the character, there are no keys. But if we go up here and we select his color, you'll notice that there are two keys and that's where the color um, animation occurs. So what we do is we can actually select, the, with the color selected, we can go in here and we've got the RGB keys and we can go frame. And this is the crossover of the two colors, okay? So if we look at the animation, we can actually see it's from frame 24 to 40, and this is where the color change occurs. But supposing I wanted the color change to just blink, let's say, or just change from these two frames here at the end, something like that, or maybe literally when he stops here at 45, he should still be um, green, and then at frame 46, he pops into red. Well, the first thing I'd do then is I'd take those red keys, which are here, and let's move them to frame 46. So over here, I'm just going to select a value for the frame and go 46. Okay, so now they're there. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two keys, which were the original green, and I can either just grab them here and drag them. That's one way we can do it. Or we can type them in over here. So I could just type in the 45, and then we get do this, we see the color change occurs between 45 and 46. So now when we play this, if we play it, he looks, he looks, he spins, and then he pops and turns to red. And the only reason it pops at the end is because you don't have very many frames. So let's just add a few frames at the end, just so it doesn't look like he's doing anything weird. So he turns, and he turns red. And we can space that out if we want. We can just grab these keys and give it a couple more frames so it does like that at the end. So maybe that's what you want or, you know, something like that. You want, you know, just in this case, six frames of the trans change. So he does this and then and then he changes into um, a certain different color. That could be his transparency too, but the odd thing again is the transparency will actually follow the object. So in that case, you'll be fine. But just the thing to remember is that if you are animating the color or a color change, that the keys are actually going to reside on the color on the object. So in this case, 
His color is Lambert 3. Alrighty, so hopefully that made sense. Next thing I want to show you is supposing you wanted to animate a map or change the map of the characters. Totally different thing to do. So let's take him back to the beginning. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down Shift and select these keys, right click and delete. Okay, so let me just change this color back to a green. Okay, so but now he spins, he stops, and he has got no color change whatsoever. But what I want to do is basically we'll graph this network is I am going to put a map in there. Okay, I'm going to say File, and I am going to say, let's say we go up to Johnny Box, Source Images, and we'll put the map that I had on him here with that annoying, peculiar <laughs> thing that I have not changed in years for some odd reason. Uh, and if you do forget how to change the side of his hair, uh, we can do that very quickly. We will just go to the polygon set and I will go to the UV texture editor and we will select our guy. We will right click and go into UV mode. Okay, and we will select this shell which lights this shell up and all we gotta do is rotate it. And now it's fine. Okie dokie. So, now we have the texture on there, and in this case, again, as far as the animation goes, he looks, he turns, and he, he, he's back to that. Okay, let's say you wanted to animate the texture map, okay, so that you'd say, well, that would be pretty cool. All right, well, let's do this. Let's uh, just clean this up a bit, and we'll graph the editor, and what I'm going to do is break this connection for a moment, right here. Okay, so we've got the Lambert right there, and this is the map going into the color channel. You can even see it there, and the, it says out color into the color, so I'll tap that and break it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go into 2D Textures, grab another file node, and it's just a file node. Click on this, and I prepared a, another map, Frank Spooky. Okay, just some color changes. Now what I'm going to do is grab a utility node, or a, I think it's under other nodes. Nope, it's under utilities, yes. And it is called the blend colors node, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the blend colors node and put it over here. Let me give myself a little bit more space. Now what the blend colors node does is it allows me to have two colors assigned to the color channel of a material, and it gives me a slider between the two. You probably know where I'm going with this. So why don't we take File 1, and I can just drag that into Color 1, and I could take File 2, and I could either drag it here, or I could drag it over there. Let me drag it over here so you see the alternate way to do it. And I'm going to pipe that into Color 2. Okay? Now I'm going to take this whole node, and drag this into here, into the Color node. Now it looks like a mishmash, the reason it looks like a mishmash. Okay, and we just changed that over from default rendering, which is why it looks so mushmashy, to here. Okay, so the blend color node now shows up in your material. Let's double click this to get our sample. And if we go into the color channel, we have a blend that'll actually blend between this map and this map. Okay, so I got two totally different texture maps now fed into a blend colors node. And in the Blend Colors node, we're going to here, and we can um, basically choose how we want to do this. So let's say um, for the animation, the character looks one way, looks the other way, starts his turn, and let's say when he has his back turned, okay, what I'm going to do is with the Blend Color node, something like this, I'm going to go to the Blender channel, and I'm going to set a key. It's currently set to this map showing. As he comes around, just say, let's say 45, what I'll do is animate this Blender map to red. And then there you go. So now in this case, he starts out here, looks this way, looks this way, spins around, and then he turns red. Okay, and if we wanted to tweak that or go into the um, go into the animation channels on this, 
This should be easy enough to find. The Blender node will turn up exactly as you would expect it. Um, but again, it's going to be in the actual material. So let's bring this up. So here you go. Under Lambert 1, we have this curve. And we'll just frame this up. And it goes around and changes to there. So what I might want to do is, in my case, I'm just going to say, give it a couple of less frames. And I'm going to even that out and just do something like that. Alrighty. So all it's going to do now is it's going to go around and then turn into that. Okay. So the actual keys, if you're changing the color, okay, are going to reside in the material. In our case, the keys or the element that we're animating is actually in this blend color node. So if you want to change the animation on this, this is what you need to select. But in either case, if you're animating the material or a node in the material, you need to uh, open up the hypershade and um, grab it from there. And that's where you can actually get to the keys. So um, when then, if you want to leave that open, you could just open up the graph editor. Um, and then there's the blender right there. So we could do whichever we want. If we wanted to, you know, ease that, we could do that. We could make this come down faster. Something like this. And then the animation just changes that way. Just like that. Okay, hopefully that made sense and it gives you some options of things that you can do with materials. We'll talk about more things uh, on Friday or Wednesday. Take care, guys.